subscribe to our channel for latest video series on gain UGC net and more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss an update on any latest video. For more information you can visit our website or call on the numbers below. So now we look at our problem of inverse Z transform using partial fraction expansion. So you've given a Z transform expression which is like, uh, XZ equal to, so this is actually the same expression that we looked at in the previous question. Uh, we've just changed the ROC, uh, previously we looked at ROC of this uh, of this Z transform which was mod Z less than 1 by 2. Now we're looking at the other ROC which is mod Z greater than 1. So for uh, doing this problem, solving this problem using partial fractions, Firstly, I need to factorize the denominator. Factors of the denominator are going to be z minus 1 and z minus 1 by 2. Right? You can just check. You can just check these are going to be the factors. Now, what am I doing is I am just taking this z in the denominator on LHS. Why am I doing this is because see uh, my partial fractions, my partial fraction expansions, my partial fractions are going to be of the form a upon z minus 1, b upon z minus 1 by 2. Okay, they are going to have some, some uh, expression of the form z minus some constant. So, if I have z in the numerator, then what is going to happen? I can just uh, directly, I can perform inverse z transform because I know these are going to be the z uh, inverse z transform of a to the power un functions of some form of this kind right so for my is whatever whenever I am just uh, performing inverse z transforms what am I going to do I am going to take a z from the numerator on LHS so that this z can be multiplied later with all the expressions of the partial fraction or whatever exp uh, method you're using for inverse z transform and i can easily perform inverse okay right so now uh, i'm just going to express this in the form of c1 upon z minus 1 plus c2 upon z minus 1 by 2 now you can uh, easily find values of c1 and c2 we have practiced this a lot of times so i'm writing the values directly xz can be written as z upon z minus 1 minus z upon z minus 1 by 2 with ROC mod z greater than 1. Now if you look at this ROC carefully it signifies that the this sig uh, this signal x of n is going to be a right sided sequence because ROC is lying right to the rightmost pole. Okay so now we can and also you can see clearly that we can just perform the inverse z transform. We know that this z upon z minus 1 is actually the z transform of un. Right, and this this expression is going to be the z transform of one by two to the power n u n. Right, so uh, my required sequence, required inverse z transform is going to be one minus one by two to the power n into u n. Now you just keep values of n, keep different values of n starting from zero, and you can just find out this series is going to be zero comma one by two comma three by four comma seven by eight and so on. Okay, so this is how we are performing inverse Z transform using partial fraction. We have already practiced partial fractions a lot. So, I am not taking a lot of questions from this model. So, uh, we have another model. Uh, it's one, one different model. So, we are going to look at it now. Now, suppose we are given a Z transform XZ which is equal to 3 upon Z minus 2 with ROC mod Z greater than 2. Now, if you try to perform the inverse Z transform for this function, you see that there is no Z in the numerator. If we had a Z in the numerator, it was very easy. Okay, we knew this, we knew uh, this function and we could perform inverse Z transform. Now, since they have not given us any uh, Z in the numerator, what do you do? You multiply the numerator and denominator with Z. Okay, uh, or I'm just multiplying this with Z and Z inverse. So, this is going to be of the form 3 into Z inverse into Z upon Z minus 2. Now what happens, what happens because of this is the inverse Z transform for this function is known. And we know that multiplication by Z inverse in the Z domain is actually shifting in time domain. So this, this is going to ease our task. Okay, we know Z transform to 2 to the power n un would be Z by Z minus 2. Also, we have time shifting property. If I just shift by one unit in time, this is going to result in multiplication with z inverse in z domain which gives me back my in original function now also we had a 3 3 is a constant you can just multiply it on both the sides so clearly xn is going to be 3 into 2 to the power n minus 1 into un minus 1 right this is going to be your required sequence fine
so now let us look at the next question now the expression for z transform is given as 2 plus z to the power minus 2 plus 3 z by minus 4 upon z square plus 4 z plus 3 now see what we are trying to do is if you just look at the numerator you will see that this cannot be factorized right and the denominator can be factorized and we can use partial fraction expansion so what am i doing is i can just i can just take this uh, denominator as some separate function so what do i write it i am writing is at 2z power minus 1 plus z power minus 3 plus 3z to the power minus 5 into x1z where where I can define x1z as z upon z square plus 4z plus 3. Why did I uh, do this? See, Whenever we are multiplying, see, I am just using the linearity property of z-transform. Whenever I am multiplying this function with any z-transform, what is going to happen? Just multiplication with z power minus 1 is going to create a shift of 1 unit in time domain. Multiplication with z power minus 3 is going to create a shift of 3 units in time domain, right? And this function is easy to factorize, easy to be, uh, easy to find inverse z-transform using partial fraction expansion. So, I easily find out the inverse z-transform for this function and then, upon multiplication with these terms I'm just going to create a shift in my uh, uh, in my required function so if I consider that x1n is the inverse z transform for this x1z and then what is x of n going to be x of n is just going to be 2x1 into n minus 1 plus x1 into n minus 3 plus 3x1 into n minus 5 right just multiplication with the constant terms and according to the power of this z creating shifts in time domain in the uh, in the function that you're going to obtain after performing inverse z transformation for this function okay so we start with performing inverse z transformation for this x1z first so x1z upon z is going to be 1 upon z square plus 4z plus 3 if you just break it in partial fractions then you're going to obtain I'm just skipping that part. We've already done that a lot of times now. So you're going to obtain x1z is 1 by 2 into z upon z plus 1 minus 1 by 2 into z upon z plus 3. Right? And since the ROC was mod z greater than 0, then x1n is going to be a right-handed sequence. So I just use, uh, we know what are going to be the inverse z transforms for this function. So this is going to be 1 by 2 into minus 1 to the power n u n minus 1 by 2 into minus 3 to the power n u n right now we already know the relation between x n and x 1 n so for them from the similar relation I am just writing the expression now directly into u n minus 1 I am taking u n common from this expression plus 1 by 2 into minus 1 to the power n minus 3 minus minus 3 to the power n minus 3 into u n minus 3 plus 3 by 2 into minus 1 to the power n minus 1 minus minus 3 to the power n minus 5 into u n minus 5. So this is going to be my required inverse z transform. Okay. So I think we have covered all the models of inverse z transformation. These are all the possible questions that you may get from uh, inverse to, for, to form for inverse z transforms.